the next level of complexity that I'd like to add to the JavaScripts that we've been writing is that of uh, working with variables. And the variable is a placeholder for something. So to talk about a placeholder, you might want to think of it as, as basically a cup or a container. Your cup may contain coffee, or it may contain cola beverage, or it may contain water, or it may contain nothing. So uh, in JavaScript, you can assign a value of some sort to a variable. This is very similar to what you may have learned in algebra in uh, high school. And uh, you know, you have x and you have y, and x equals 3, and y equals 2, and therefore x plus y equals 5. So in order to do this in JavaScript, we type the word or the command var. So I'm going to do this right here in uh, JavaScript 05.htm uh, here, which I'm going to modify just a little further. And you'll see that we're going to be using a lot of these scripts that we've uh, used from previous sessions. And we're going to modify them to make the scripts more efficient and more, more readable. So I'm going to create a variable name. Now, a variable name in JavaScript is known as an identifier. And there are a couple of rules that you need to adhere to when you create these identifiers. And that's the following. A variable must begin with a letter. And the letter may be, again, A through Z, or capital A through capital Z, or an underscore. So that's what a variable must start with. But a variable may include different combinations of letters, underscores, or numbers, or digits 0 through 9. So I can create a variable called A, or I can create a variable A1. I'm going to create a variable name called prompt text. And I want to note a couple of things here. One is that you're creation of variables should be with words or a description that is very similar to the way that the variable is going to be used. I'm going, I'm going to be using a variable called prompt text, which is going to be the text that I'm going to be using inside this document write prompt that we've been uh, working with in the previous session. And what I'm going to do very simply here is I'm going to take the prompt text here, prompt, please enter your name, dot, 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 like this, OK? And actually, I'm going to take this whole thing. There we go. I'm going to uh, assign that to the variable prompt text. So I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to go to the Edit menu and Cut, Control X. And I'm going to paste this right here at the end of this variable line. This basically means create a variable called prompt text, OK, and assign it to this prompt, please enter your name, quote, comma, quote, quote, etc. Okay. Now, prompt text is going to actually be assigned the value of what the person types into that prompt dialog box. So in order to use this variable, we can simply copy that variable name and paste it right here. Okay. And I just use the keyboard shortcuts to copy and paste that uh, very quickly. So hello, comma, quote, plus prompt text. And prompt text is basically the value of what the person typed in. And we're going to finish that off with a period, as we did before. OK, I'm going to save this as js06.htm. And this will be our first use of variables here. And I might even add this line up at the top here, the variable, and save it again. And now I'm going to take uh, js06.htm and I'm going to drag it into my uh, Internet Explorer window here. And I'll type in a name here. I'm going to type in a different name just to keep people on their toes. Click OK. And sure enough, the JavaScript works exactly the same way. Only it has substituted a variable for that prompt information. So when JavaScript hits this line, it sees the prompt command, and it opens up that dialog box, and it takes what the person has typed in, and it's essentially substituted that information into this variable. And then we call that variable, or we use that variable down here in the document write line.
that is the probably the, the simplest way of describing and utilizing a variable in JavaScript. Now, a variable in JavaScript can have several different types of values. Okay? I'm going to type in a little comment here as I speak. So a variable may be text, which is known as a string. Okay? And a string is basically a combination of characters or numbers that you can actually type out on the keyboard. The variable may also be a number of sorts. And a number can be, there's several different types of numbers you can use in JavaScript. Um, they can be uh, whole numbers or integers. And they can also be uh, numbers with decimal points or real numbers or, or what are also known as floating point numbers. You may also have a variable which has a Boolean value. And that's B-O-O-L-E-A-N. And Boolean basically means it's, it's a logical variable or a variable which can either be true or false. And this pops up numerous times in JavaScript. Okay? So those are the three primary types of variables that you work with in JavaScript. Okay, so the, the prompt text variable is actually a string variable. When we prompt the user for information through the prompt dialog box, the user enters in some kind of text, and then that, that prompt text variable um, stands for the text that was entered, and it pops up here in the document write uh, command here in the JavaScript code. Okay? So again, variables can be either a string, a number, or a Boolean value, and they represent some particular value. The advantage of using variables is that variables can be accessed in numerous places throughout your JavaScript. You can have JavaScript actually occurring in several different places in your HTML page. And every time that we access prompt text, we could actually return the person's name. So we could just as well call this variable uh, username. Okay? And if we did that, then we can substitute username here as well instead of the word prompt text. This is actually a little better because it's much easier to understand the JavaScript code as we read through it. Much easier for someone uh, who's looking at your code to say, oh, username must be the name of the user. Okay? So you want to use variables in ways uh, which are memorable for you to make your troubleshooting a little easier and also for anybody else who happens to be reading your scripts.